G'day. Today we're doing a bit of work on a Subaru 2012. It's the G4X Subaru. Just recently she had the all the uh, lights come on the dash. Apparently a mechanic has cleared those codes and it's been okay for a while but apparently the transmission had some issues as well. Now these have the TR580 transmission in them and the valve body is actually located on the top here. You've got to take that cover off. The valve body actually sits on top of the transmission. So if you need any access to any solenoids, that's where you're going to be looking. Now I'm going to take it out for a test run. We'll see what's happening. So basically what I've done is I've gone through selecting the sport shift on the paddle shifters there and just gone through the shifts manually up down up through the, the shift pattern back down as much as I could. The idea is to try and flush the solenoids if possible. Her codes haven't come back for a while she reckons so We'll do a service on it. And this one's done about 150,000, I think. And you can see that the pan has probably never been off. It's elastic on there. Now this particular one is the Gen 2, the TR580 transmission. Lineatronic CVT. And you've also got a similar one, which is the TR... 690 the gen 1 now we're going to just drain the oil out of it here drain that out and to fill it the fill plug is over here on the left hand side of the transmission i'll show you that later in the video on these they have a front diff that's actually bolted to the transmission and it's got separate oil or gear oil and to drain the oil out is this one here. So you've just got to be aware that the oil isn't common to the transmission and the front diff. Good idea to check it while you're doing the service on it. And to fill the diff, the front diff, there's a plug. It's a little bit hard to see here. But it's just above the right hand side. CV joint there. You'll see there's a little Allen key plug there. Now make sure you don't mix up the plug. On the Gen 2, the TR580, you'll find there's a plug above the left hand side axle, if you read that. But that one actually goes to the transmission pump. So make sure you don't mix that up or you'll be in strife. You'll think you've topped up the front diff but you've actually pumped gear oil into the transmission your transmission will be over full and your differential front diff will be low on oil or no oil and i'll just check the front diff oil level you can see i've got an eight mil allen key socket there and it's just above and to the left of the right hand CV joint. Might need a little bit of a top up. Should be just weeping out of that. A few pumps of the oil pump. And there's enough there. Now on any CVT transmission, a just a, a fluid flush, or on any transmission, but especially CVT transmissions, just draining the oil, changing the oil is pretty much useless. What you need to do is actually take the pan off, replace the filter, and what's most important is to clean the magnet. In the CV transmissions, you have a lot of metal to metal 
contact components like the chains on the pulleys, gears, etc. So they create a fair bit of very fine metal from normal wear and tear. If you don't do a clean of the magnet and replace of the filter, you're going to really reduce the life of the transmission. I like to also add magnets in it. My recommendation on any CVT transmission uh, to do a service every 50,000 kilometres with taking the pan off, not just doing a fluid change. Every 50,000 once the transmission is done under 200,000 and every once a year or every 30,000 when it's done over 200,000. That way you'll keep a lot of that fine metal out of the solenoids and everything will be as clean as it can be and you'll get much better life out of the transmission. Now these are Celastic Don, they've never been off. You can get gaskets, when you put a filter kit in them they come with a gasket so we know this one's never been serviced. Important to not damage or bend the pan when you're getting it off. I've got our little metal scraper there and I just try and hammer it into a spot just to cut that to elastic. It's important to be very patient so you don't damage the pan rail or, or the pan. pretty well. And that's what I'm talking about. You can see the magnet, it's completely covered in this fine muck. When they become covered like that, they don't work anymore. So all this fine metal, that's so fine it's sort of the consistency of grease, it'll go and become contaminated in your solenoids. The solenoids are the things that control all the shifts and pressures and timing of all the shifts. So very important clean that magnet, replace the filter and I like to even add magnets on the CVT transmissions and any transmission really. The cleaner you keep it, the cooler you keep a transmission, the longer it'll last. Those bolts are just 10mm. And see where the magnet was sitting on the filter there as well or underneath the filter. And just be aware you'll get a, an airlock there in the filter if you're taking these off hot or even on the ground you'll get a, a bit of a surge of oil so be aware of that you don't get it all over yourself. So we're just going to clean that pan rail replace that filter, clean the pan, put an additional magnet in there, clean the magnet that was in it. Pan's nice and clean, cleaned off all that celastic. We're going to put a cork rubber gasket on there. It's going to leave the original magnet up on the ridge there. I don't think you can actually because it's going to be hitting the, the filter and we're going to add an additional neodymium magnet on there. 
Good idea before you bolt it up, when you have the filter on, leave the gasket off and just test that that's not going to be in the way of anything. Filter, you want to make sure, just compare it to the old one and make sure it's got that o-ring there or you're going to be in trouble. If it doesn't have that o-ring, it can suck air where it shouldn't be. Okay, we've got the pan back on. Now these transmissions, the TR580s, they actually have a inline filter as well. Looks like this. However, you need to disassemble the transmission or pull it out and apart to replace that one. To fill the transmission, we take off this 8mm plug here on the left hand side of the transmission. And the idea is, if you remember the, the tube on that filter, it's up around that height there. You've got to have the motor running at between 30 and 40 degrees, and it should be just trickling out at the bottom of that plug hole. We will be using the Tritec CVT fluid. Now we just start it up. Yep. Now we've got to get it to 30, between 30 and 40 degrees just coming out of that port there. So we're up to 31 degrees. If you overheat it, go over the 40 degrees, you've got to actually let it cool down and recheck it. The reason being is with heat the oil expands. If it's over temperature or over 40 degrees you'll have the expanded oil coming out of here and when the transmission fluid cools down you'll be underfilled if that makes sense. But we're on about 30 odd degrees and it should be just coming out of there now. I've just got to top that up. And it's just coming out there now, you can see that. Just trickling out. Everything's back on, we've blown it all out, plugs back in, make sure you tighten up the drain plug if you've loosened that. And be aware that there is a slight uh, difference in filling the Gen 1 and the Gen 2 front diff on these. Occasionally you'll come across a problem where you'll think that the transmission's been overfilled and unless they've filled the transmission when it's at below or well below 30 degrees to allow that to be overfilled uh, the only other possible way of getting the transmission oil level over full is if the oil is leaking from the front diff into the transmission. On these, the torque converter sits right at the front, then you've got the front diff, then the transmission, and there are channels and tubes that go from the torque converter to the transmission. And the uh, the front diff oil is separate to the transmission. So being over full could indicate that they've either, either filled it at the wrong temperature or below the low temperature mark or you're getting gear oil in the transmission. Hope that makes sense. Anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe throw me a beer if any of this information has helped. Don't forget to leave any comments or questions in the section below and our link for beers is in there as well. Thank you for watching.